Hey friends, Dr. Alan Davis here. Are you an evolutionist when it comes to your understanding of the gospel? What do I mean by this question? Well, there's a common saying amongst Christians that we need to die to self and we must do so daily so that we might grow in the faith and become better Christians. Now, let's think about this understanding just for a moment. When God spoke on the first day of creation, let there be light, how much time passed before the light appeared? None. It was instantaneous. Had it been a mere nanosecond, it would have been evolution. In the same respect, when God declares a person righteous, when does that occur? A minute from now? An hour? A day? Some other time in the future? Or is it immediately? Listen, friends, if it's not an immediate process, and not by anything that a person would do individually, then God is an evolutionist and didn't mean it when he spoke through Christ in Matthew 8, chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, when Jesus put forth his hand and touched the leper, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. It wasn't later in the day. It wasn't the next day. It was right there. It was right then. Then why is it we believe we need to be on some kind of a journey, a pilgrimage, if you will, to get better, to improve. Listen, righteousness is righteousness. You've heard it said a woman can't be kind of pregnant. She either is or she isn't, right? So it is with a righteous person. Further, it is not about dying to self. No, rather, it is submitting oneself so that he might be crucified and live. That's what the gospel is all about. Paul wrote to us and said of himself, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Now, was he crucified and was he dead for a period of time? Was he slowly resurrected unto life? Or was he born again immediately? Because that is where we need to be. That is both necessary and sufficient. We are to submit ourselves a living sacrifice and have a complete transform transformation of mind so we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And we are to live. But live unto what? Unto righteousness. When? Immediately. When one is hidden in the finished work of Jesus Christ, he is righteous, 100%. And it doesn't matter if it just happened today or 20 years ago. A person is not partially righteous. One cannot be partially saved. Now, within that righteousness, before I misunderstood, does one need to grow in grace? Well, of course. How? By one's own dying on a daily basis? God forbid. In fact, many people misunderstand, they misread what Paul had to say in 1 Corinthians 15 when he said, I die daily. Somehow or another, they have taken that text out of context and made it a mantle, essentially, of self-flagellation, when that's not what he meant whatsoever. In fact, based on the context, he meant every day, my life is on the line for what I preach, for what I believe. Now the question is, can we say the same thing? How then shall we grow in grace, as Peter declared in his second epistle, that is, from faith unto charity? John the Baptist gave us the answer. He must increase, but I must decrease. And by allowing the Spirit of God to increase in the life, that is, crucifying us completely, not a partial submission, but a total submission, we are born again, and we become more unto the similitude of Jesus Christ. And yet, the degree of righteousness and the time of its declaration is unaffected. Whether you are a quote-unquote babe in Christ or a 20, 30, 40, 50-year veteran, you are 100% righteous if you are in Christ. But you are growing in grace. If one remains hidden in Christ, he is righteous, 100%, period, dot, end of discussion. And so the question is begged, how shall we then live? Committed 
to the finished work of God in Christ by the power of his spirit that he might live out the gospel in our own lives, one of relieving suffering and of giving hope to the hopeless. My friends, may the Lord richly bless you as you contemplate these things.